Hello everyone, my name is Kenton Cavestu. I'm an ex-BCG consultant, an ex-Googler, and the founder of Rocketblocks, which is an online platform that helps students prepare for case interviews. In today's Rocketblocks mini lesson, we're going to be talking about an incredibly common problem, question rather, that will come up in the consulting interview process, probably repeatedly throughout it, and it comes up in all sorts of interviews outside the consulting interview process as well. So whether you're interviewing for McKinsey or a PM position at Google, this question is going to be something that you will face at some point. And that question is, walk me through your resume. Now, it seems like it should be such a simple question to answer. After all, a resume is a document that you wrote about things that you've done in your life. I mean, what could be easier than simply just walking someone through that? Well. The challenge comes in the fact that it's really tough, actually, to concisely articulate what you've accomplished in your career to date and do it in a way that kind of augments the written material on your resume and shows the interviewer how you're really going to bring your unique value to this company. So what we're going to do in this mini lesson is actually talk about what is kind of the meaning of this question. What's the, the question behind the question, if you will, when someone says, walk me through your resume. And then we're going to talk about three concrete tips that are going to help you answer this question with confidence and in a way that's really going to make a positive impact on your interviewer. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the number one mistake that candidates make when someone says, walk me through your resume, is they translate that question into something akin to, Tell me everything about your career to date in reverse chronological order. Now, if you've had a super interesting career and you've done a ton of interesting things and you have a very succinct uh, way to explain that, that might work. But for 99, 98% of candidates, if you translate the question that way, your answer ends up uh, you know, can being a bloated, rambling, kind of unfocused answer that just summarizes everything you've done to date. And even if you've done a lot of impressive things, that delivery of that content is typically going to fall flat. And so what you want to do is you really want to understand the question behind the question. And that is, if someone asks you, walk me through your resume, what they really want to understand is, tell me about how your experiences, skills, and accomplishments make you the ideal candidate for the role that we're currently hiring for. The question is really about the company and about the interviewer. It's about how do you fit into what that company needs. And so that's really what you want to focus on when you're answering this question. And once you see the question in that light, you now start to understand what consultants call the so what implication of the question. Walk me through your resume isn't really about a chronological history of your career to date. It's about your key skills and key accomplishments and why those make you the ideal candidate for the company. So now that we know the question behind the question, we're going to dive into our three tips for answering that and really doing it in a way that's going to make a real positive impact on the interviewer. Tip number one, focus on your career arc. So, as we talked about earlier, this question is not about a strict chronological answer. If you find yourself doing, first I did this, then I did this, then I did that, then I did that, not only are you going to bore yourself, but even worse, you're going to bore your interviewer. <laughs> and that is definitely something you don't want to do. So instead, what you want to do is you really want to curate the experiences that you're sharing. And you want to find experiences that have certain skills that are relevant for the job that you're currently interviewing for and that you can nicely kind of connect together so you get something that looks like a career arc as opposed to just a random chronological progression. So to illustrate this, I'm going to talk about two disparate career experiences from my own resume and show how you can connect them together in, in the beginnings of a career arc as opposed to just chronological order. And those experiences are knife salesman and marketing intern at a gaming company. So let's look at that. Okay, so early in my college experience, I took a summer job as a knife salesman selling knives door to door for a company called Cutco. And really what I learned in this experience is, is two key things. The, the first is that direct sales as a career path for me was gonna be really tough because it required this always on sales mentality 
and maybe you know someone that's extremely extroverted that that just wasn't me. The the second thing that I learned was that you know in the sales pitches themselves, if you could weave in the emotional value and the emotional connection to a product, as opposed to just focusing focusing on the utilitarian you know product features and the functionality, uh, it made pitches that much more kind of colorful and compelling, and it really made uh, a impact on, on purchasing decisions for consumers. And so, you know, with selling knives, this was things like weaving in the experience of cooking and cooking meals, and that often involves cooking for friends and family, and especially if someone loves cooking, there's a lot of good memories that get created there. So if you could weave that in, that was super effective, and I found that really, really interesting. And those two things actually led me to an internship later in my college career at Electronic Arts in the marketing department. And, and the reason for that was I knew that I didn't want to be on the direct sales side, but I was really interested in this emotional connection and how that drove purchasing decisions. And Electronic Arts was a company whose games I had grown up playing. i have been playing you know, the NHL series um, you know, since 1994, uh, growing up, and probably had played every single year throughout the rest of my high school, middle school career. And uh, so for me, I had a strong emotional connection uh, to those games and, the, and you know, naturally the, the chance to apply those learnings at a marketing role at EA was a really, really fun experience. Okay, so taking a step back, you now see how two disparate experiences, selling knives and a marketing internship at the gaming company Electronic Arts can actually be connected in a much more meaningful way than just kind of chronological order. You can kind of fuse them together by showing this bridge of how learning from one role translate into how you sought out and pursued another role and why that actually made sense. Tip number two, distill your experiences. So now that you've established the narrative arc, the thing you wanna think about is for each of the experiences within, within the arc, what are you actually going to share about them? And I think really what you want to remember here is you, you don't want to go overboard. This is not a deep dive on every single experience in your career progression. Remember that the question is about your career arc and how it naturally led you to the position you're interviewing for. So you want to give a little bit of a summary of each, uh, but you don't want to go into all the detail and find yourself rambling going down into a rat hole on a particular item. So. The three questions that I would recommend you answer for each experience in the career arc is, one, uh, what led you to that role? Two, what did you learn from that role? And three, how did it influence your next steps? So if you think about the EA example that we, we started walking through, we actually already answered the first question, which is we know why I pursued that role. It was due to the learnings from my prior role as a knife salesman. And so that's, that's the first step, but we haven't covered parts two and three yet. So let's revisit that example, and I'm going to walk through part questions two and three for the EA example. Okay, so when I was at EA, I really learned two things. The first was that it was my first exposure to the Silicon Valley tech scene that EA was a part of, and I found that scene really, really exciting and enthralling. There was just so many new products being launched, and the people that were working on them were so enthusiastic about the impact they were going to have, and it was just a really great, positive scene. And so the first thing I learned is that you know, regardless of what happened with this internship, when I was looking for a job a year later, I knew I wanted to come work in the Silicon Valley tech scene. So that was the first thing. The second thing I learned was that at EA, I did get a chance to build on how that emotional value and connection to a product can really influence uh, and make marketing uh, work and make it really powerful. But the other thing I noticed was that my interest in video games itself, uh, that connection, you know, had, had actually waned over time. Like it was something that I grew up uh, playing a lot of video games as a child and in middle school, but throughout high school and college, it had waned. So the second learning for me there was that I liked that style of work, but I wanted to find a place where I could put those skills and leverage those insights um, and put them to use on a product that I really cared about and that I use daily. And at the time for me, that was actually Google because their search engine was relatively new on the market. Um, and I thought it was just personally better than all the other competition out there, and I was recommending it to my friends and family. So it was kind of a natural place to look for a job. And so Google went from not being on my radar at all as a place to work uh, to the top of my list. 
Okay, so taking a step back, you see how points two and three for the EA experience communicate a few key learnings, and then also how it influenced what I looked for in my next role. So it continues that narrative arc very nicely. Tip number three, connect the dots. So we first talked about establishing the narrative arc. And then we also talked about for each item within the narrative arc, you know, what are the key pieces of information to share about that? So you paint a good picture. And you'll notice that as we were talking about that, one of the critical components was the last bit for each experience is how it connects to the next one. What is kind of the, the item in, or the, you know, the glue that holds those two things together and helps create that narrative? So the critical thing here is when you are finishing and you're discussing the last uh, experience in your narrative arc that you want to highlight, you don't want to just stop there. You want to connect that experience directly to the role that you're applying for currently. This has uh, two really nice benefits. One, it's just a great capstone and end to the question of walk me through your resume. It's a really natural place to end. The second thing is that it shows that you've really thought about how this role at McKinsey, Bain, or BCG, or wherever it might be, really fits into your career story. And that it's not some job that you just threw your resume in the pile for at the last minute, but that you really thought about how this is the clear kind of next step in your career progression. So it's a really great way to just kind of tie a bow on the whole answer. Okay, so in conclusion, walk me through your resume is one of those questions that seems like it should be super simple, but it's really easy to go off the rails quite quickly and end up doing some sort of kind of boring, stilted, strict chronological order answer. So you don't want to do that. And I think the key thing that will help you remember and kind of get your answer to this question right is think about the question behind the question. The, you know, what the consultants call the so what implication. And that is they want to see how your experiences and skills and accomplishments to date really kind of naturally flow together and are the natural lead in to the role that you're currently applying for. So if you can remember that insight and use the tips we talked about, you're going to be able to craft a really great answer to this question. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, uh, please do. You can hit the red button below. We've got great videos on the interview process coming out weekly, and we look forward to seeing you soon.